and welcome to Mr. Lee's Kitchen Lounge. I'm your host, Lee Books. This morning is a breakfast segment featuring Hoe Cakes. That's right, Hoe Cakes, spelled H-O-E-C-A-K-E-S. And I tell you what, a little bit of history about the Hoe Cake. It's an, actually a tradition that started back in 1745 with the Native Americans, originally done with corn starch and corn meal. And what we've done now is in the later, later 1800s, it went to the flour stage. So what we're going to do today is a flour hoe cake, and uh, it's going to be put some real soul in your soul for breakfast. We're going to do some sweetened cinnamon applesauce. We're going to do some absolutely delicious bacon. And we're going to get started in just a couple of seconds so you can see exactly how it's done. I don't know about you, the words on a page and the recipe is all right, but guess what? When you see it done, you can do it a lot better. Let's go. So now actually what you need, you need two cups of self-rising flour, you need one cup of buttermilk, and you need a half cup or a, four, or a quarter of a stick of butter. And let's make that a half stick of butter. And this is more than a half stick, but we'll measure that out for you so you can see how it's going to work. So here's what we'll do. The first thing we do, we take our measuring cup and we find out where's the two cup portion. And you can see it's right there halfway up, okay? So we're going to pour our flour in, like so. We're going to shake it to make sure that it is what? That it's even. And then we take our flour and pour it into our sifter. shake it like that. That's going to aerate the flour as well. It's going to make it rise even better than it normally would. And you can see how the flour is falling into the pan, into the mixing bowl. This takes a little time. Now one thing that we want to do, and you're probably going to say, what is he reaching for over here? This is actually my all-purpose cutting board. And you can see exactly what we use that for. You say, what? Is that? that looks like a floor tile. Well, guess what? It actually is a floor tile. And the reason I found this is an absolute excellent item for using as a cutting board. It's nice and smooth and it's very strong. And guess what? When you clean it, you clean it with a little Clorox and uh, soap, dry it, and it's nice and sanitary. Now that we've sifted our flour into the mixing bowl, we take our buttermilk, crack the top on it. Then I always put the top back on and give it a good shake. like so. And before we go any further, what I also like to do is put on, since we're going to be working with this mixture with our hands, put on a pair of rubber gloves. That's a very important thing. In today's society, we're all very germophobic, so we're going to make sure that we're preparing our foods the right way. So, we'll take this and we're going to pour one cup buttermilk like so and what I always like to do is make a little crease in the middle of the flour as such and we just pour that right in almost like it's all pushing a little bowl okay that's all you're going to need for the, for the measuring cup then our butter Heaping teaspoons of butter. This has been pre-salted, so it worked real well. Okay. So now that we have our mixture ready, this is where the fun starts. You gotta start putting your hands in here and getting nice. And, oh yeah. And it even feels good. <laughs> you gotta actually if you think about it, what you're actually working with here. It's biscuit dough. This is nothing but a big biscuit that we're going to be working with here. And if ever you find out and feel as though that, oh, wait a minute, what's going on here? Something is not going to quite right. If it feels like it's too dry, you can always add a little bit more buttermilk. If it feels like it's too wet, then guess what? You can always add some more flour. So therefore, until you get the consistency that you're really looking for, as far as the dough is concerned. 
Okay, now what you want to do next is you want to sprinkle a little flour onto your cutting board. Or I'll see my blending board where I'm going to be utilizing my dough. You spread it out there. Meanwhile, you're getting a little flour on your hands as well. So you can work with your dough a little bit better. When you come over here and you notice that the consistency is getting pretty good, okay? Take it, put it right over here, and then we can start pressing this bad boy out. Like so, you see? Now what I like to do, and what I'm going to suggest you do, is rather hard to work with one big hoe cake. So what I'm going to suggest you do is, what I'm going to show you in just a couple of seconds, make sure you have enough flour, go ahead and do what you need to do. That's going to help the dough to keep st from sticking on your what? On your gloves, okay? Fold it over, fold over again. You're still working with it. It's like a potter molding clay, okay? So the next thing we're gonna do at this point in time, we're just gonna take rendered bacon fat that's all this is, rendered bacon fat. And we're gonna put it in the bottom of the pan. Bacon stove, like so. We're gonna turn that on a medium heat. Let that get nice and warm. While we're doing that, we're gonna take our bacon. And what I find out about cooking bacon is, I like to do my bacon in the oven. When you cook it in the oven, it seems as though it doesn't burn as easily, first of all. Second of all, it maintains a lot of the moisture within the bacon, yet it still provides a little crispness. So, and plus it, the big pan holds a lot more bacon than your regular small cast iron skillet does. There's a whole array of cast iron skillet cooking that is available, and we're gonna be sharing some of those recipes with you some other time. I should say I am going to be sharing them with you. And while we're talking about I'm laying this bacon into the pan, just want to let you know we're going to have some guests coming in from time to time. We're going to even have some guest chefs coming in from time to time showing you their wares. We hope you're going to really enjoy this program. It's something that the regular everyday citizen doesn't get a chance to see. We're not the Chew. We're not the Food Network. We're just Mr. Lee's Kitchen Lounge. And we're going to have a lot of fun. And that should take care of that. We'll close our bacon back up. As a matter of fact, we're going to put half a package of bacon. That's Wright's brand, which is a very good applewood bacon. Our oven to 350 degrees on bake. And we check out on the middle rack. Put it in and just let it have fun. Okay? Now back over to our whole cake. We let it rest a few minutes. It starts to get nice and tight, as you see. And as I was saying earlier, to work with one large oak cake is rather hard to do in your regular cast iron skillet. So what I suggest you do is, this is a very ideal item right here, just cut your dough right in half, like so. So what are we doing? We're actually going to make two manageable, workable whole cakes, okay? So when I get through, then my video staff here will have one piece. <laughs> now you can see they're both about the same size. We still have our butter right here, and we're not going to use that butter again until the whole cakes are ready, okay? Now why are we letting while we're letting our rendered bacon fat here get nice and hot, we're gonna take our saucepan, it's 1.5 liter saucepan, and get your nice regular store-bought applesauce. Pour it in, like so. And I'm telling you what you're gonna do. You're gonna put that in, like so, right? Do not throw the jar away. Reason being, 
what's left over, you can put back in the jar and put it in the refrigerator for the next application, okay? A cup of sugar that we're gonna put in, because this is unsweetened applesauce. Unsweetened, okay? And to make it really pop, we're gonna take about two teaspoons of cinnamon, okay? Then on, then on top of that, we're gonna taste a nice dollop of butter on top. And we're gonna stir that in. And we're gonna let this butter cook on medium low. This uh, applesauce cook on medium low. And just, just until it begins to bubble. Whip it in real well. And you can always sweeten it to your taste. If it's not sweet enough for you, add more sugar. There's an old saying, just like with salt, you can always add more, but you can't take it out once it's in. Make brindle bacon fat is nice and warm and hot. So you take your first whole cake, and just lay it in. Like so. Just go ahead and let that cook a little bit. So, right now we're gonna listen to a little music and see how you like a little jazz. Now what you always want to look for when you're cooking your whole cake is to look around the edges of the whole cake and if it looks like it's beginning to turn brown and moves easily in the pan like so, then you know it's time to, uh, to flip it. So there we are. Always have a toothpick handy. The reason for the toothpick is if you're ever cooking a cake or what have you, you want to make sure it's done in the center. So you take your toothpick and stick it in. If it comes out moist, then you know it's not ready. If it comes out dry, then you know it's ready to go. And as you can see, the applesauce is coming along real well. It's beginning to bubble. At this point, when it starts to bubble, which you can always do, is, is to do the taste test. Take it out, let it sit in the dish for a couple of seconds so it can cool off a little bit. Then you can taste it. That's just right. That's just right. Cinnamon is just right. Sugar is just right. As I said, if you want to make it sweeter, you can always add more sugar. If you want more cinnamon, you can always add more cinnamon. But that is good. So now we just flipped it again. And you see it's getting nice. This was the first side that you saw a few moments ago. You can see it's getting just the right consistency and the right brownness. I'll leave it in here for about another two or three minutes and this one will be ready. Now you want to test and make sure that everything is coming along just fine in the center of the whole cake. So you take your toothpick and stick it in and you see it comes out nice and dry. So now we know that this one is ready. So what we want to do now at this point in time is just take this particular whole cake out and put it right up on this plate. And that one is ready. We're going to take our butter and just put on and just spread it on the top of it, like so. The heat of the whole cake is going to help it to melt, and you can see how nicely that looks. It makes you just want to break a piece off right now and taste it. Yes, it does. And as you can see, that bacon is cooking very nicely. You take your tongs and turn the bacon over. Continue to cook. As, as I said, this is an excellent way to cook bacon. And also to accumulate reduced or uh, accumulated bacon fat, which you can use in your string beans. You can use in any of the number of dishes that you want to cook using bacon fat that adds a delicious flavor to a lot of different dishes. And now since we've completed the whole cake breakfast with the delicious applewood bacon, the whole cake's there too for you and your special friend, and also some delicious applesauce with cinnamon, I'm going to give it a test run. I wish we had smell vision because it sure smells good. And what I like to do is I like to 
get me some good applesauce and put right on top of the whole cake like so and we'll get a nice piece of bacon and guess what we're going to give it a test run right now to see how it tastes oh my god it's pretty good if I do say so myself wish you were here with me but until the next segment I'm going to enjoy this whole cake and bacon and applesauce and we're going to be looking for you at the next segment take care peace out